Your design looks polished, but does it feel interactive? You've nailed your designs in Figma, but when it comes to bringing your designs to life, it's missing that spark of interactivity. That's where hover effects come in. They can transform your designs, giving it that extra layer of realism and engagement. And the best part is, you don't need to be a coding wizard to make it happen. Hey dudes, I'm Brom, and after 20 years designing, I've learned one thing for sure. It's the little things, like a well-timed hover effect that can take a prototype from pretty good to great. In this video, we'll learn how to add hover effects to things like buttons and images in Figma. We'll look at how these little interactions can make your prototype so much more engaging and even save some developers tearing their hair out later. Let's dive in. Right, so I'm in Figma and you can see I've got a super simple button design here. It looks fine, but if nothing happens when someone hovers over it, it's like shouting, click me into the void. To fix this, let's add a hover effect. First, make sure your button is either in a frame or an auto layout. This is so you can make use of the prototyping tools. If you click on prototype and don't see the interactions menu, this is probably why. Now, let's duplicate this button. I'll call this one hover. Let's think about what we want the button to do when someone hovers over it. The simplest thing to do is to change the background color. So I'll modify the color from the duplicated button to something a bit darker. You can play around with updating other elements too, like border color, font weight, or even drop shadow. But let's stick with just color for this. Right, so you've got two states, default and hover. The next thing to do is to link them together. With your original default button selected, click the prototype tab up here. Then back on your button, you'll notice if you hover over it, you get a circle with a plus button in it. Click and pull this to your new hover button. That's linked the two button states together, but we're not quite done. By default, Figma sets the trigger, the thing that causes the prototype to do a thing, to click. For a hover state, we don't want this. So in the drop down under trigger, change it to while hovering. You'll notice a load of other options in there too that are worth having a play around with if you've never tried them. Anyway, your button is now set up. So let's have a look at this in prototype mode. Make sure your default button is selected. If you click the little drop down next to the play button up here, you can select preview, which creates a small preview screen where you can play with your prototype. You can also much more easily adjust prototype settings if you have this open rather than the full screen demo mode. So the button works. I can mouse over the button and the background color changes. It's quite abrupt though, and switches instantly between the two states. I'm not a huge fan. So let's add a bit more polish to this with a simple animation. Select the joining arrow between your two buttons, which will bring up the interaction panel again. You'll notice a drop-down called animation. Click that and you have a load of options you can now choose from here too. I'm going to select dissolve and leave the other settings as default. These other settings let you choose the animation style and how long you want it to last for. But I'm happy with the defaults for now. If you hover over the button in your preview mode, you can see a smooth transition between the default and hover states. To expand on this, you could also add other states. You could change how the button looks or behaves when it's pressed, or you could add animation to the button after a delay to really catch the user's attention. So that was a super simple way to add basic hover effects to buttons. Here's another example of how hover effects can really elevate your prototypes, this time for images. On the left, I have an image I downloaded from Unsplash via the Figma plugins section. And on the right, I have a frame with the exact same dimensions. Again, make sure that these are both in frames or auto layouts to use the prototyping tools. I want to use this as an element on screen so that users get some additional information when they hover over the image. So let's link these together as we did before. Click the prototype tab and drag the circle plus icon from the left image to the right. Now change the trigger to while hovering. This is where we can now play around with some settings we didn't use when we created the button. Under animation, select move in. Now let's preview this. You'll see that when you hover over the image now, the second image moves over. Pretty cool and very easy to set up. You can also change the direction the second image moves in from using these arrows here. There are also slight variations on the animation style too. Let's change this to push, for example. You'll notice that the second image now pushes out the first. And finally, let's try slide in. You'll notice this is like a combination of move in and push 
with a slight effect on darkness of the original image as it animates. Play around with all the settings and you can find some really interesting combinations that will make your prototypes really come to life. These hover effects aren't just eye candy, by building them into your prototypes, developers get a clear picture of the interaction you envision and they can actually use Figma to pull out important variables and code they will need to match your prototype. Adding hover effects isn't just about making your designs look cooler, though it helps. It's about creating a responsive experience where users feel like they're interacting with something that's alive. These effects signal that an element is clickable or interactive, guiding the users through your designs. It's crucial for usability and user experience. But remember, subtlety is key. Too many animations can feel like a PowerPoint from 1997. Don't be that designer. Now that you know why hover effects can be so powerful and how to leverage them in your designs, check out this video to level up your designs even more. I'm off to apply hover states to other things in my life, like that hoverboard I always wanted as a kid. In the meantime, keep calm, stay creative, and I'll catch you in the next one.